Hi everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap. Today I'll be making a grapefruit soap. It's called Ruby Grapefruit. It's a particular kind of grapefruit because different grapefruits have different colors. So I really like the, the quality of the color in, in Ruby Grapefruits. There's an orangey red. And so I'll be talking about the color scheme for that, which is basically an analogous color scheme, which I've talked about before on the color wheel. But now I'm talking about these little nuances and things that you can do to change the color scheme a little bit. So I'll be talking about that to make it a little bit more personalized and a little bit more unique. But the big news that I want to share with you is that I've been invited to be a presenter at the 2016 SoapCon in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. And that's going to be on October 1st and 2nd of this year. I uh, can't wait to get out there. And I'm most excited because I may get a chance to meet some of you out there. And I'm really excited to meet Kathy McGinnis, who invited me to be a part of this year's SoapCon. Because I've been following her instructional YouTube uh, channel for a long time. I've learned so much about soaping through her. And she's been always a uh, soap idol to me. And I actually get to meet with her for the first time, so I'm really excited about that too. So I hope I get to meet some of you out there, and if not, I um, should be talking a little bit more about what I learned, who I got to meet out there in videos that follow that. So let's get started with the color tutorial and then on to the soap making. Well, let's talk about today's color, and it's a return to the analogous color scheme. And color schemes that are analogous uh, are colors that are right next to each other on the color wheel. Um, you can take it very lit literally and just say red, violet, red, red, orange, orange, three or more colors to make that color scheme. You could turn the color wheel and pick different colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. In this case though, I'm going to be designing the soap um, ruby grapefruit so i want to have something in the range of colors that you would find in grapefruit um, but i'm not going to take this as literal literal as um, next to each other um, immediately next to each other instead um, i'm going to pick red orange yellow and then as an outside color for contrast i'm going to go across the color wheel to the green so there's a little bit of complementary color involved too since red and green are opposites. So the first thing I'm going to do though is get some white on the page before I get my paint brush all muddied up. So there's my white which is also going to be in my soap to brighten things up. So now I have this range of this darkest value color with this lightest value color for contrast somewhere in the soap which I think makes more of a dramatic design. But, um, you know, you, you can get easily bored and limited if you just take the color wheel for what it is. And that's why we have other choices. So what I'm going to do with the orange is I'm going to bring it a little bit more close to the red by adding some red to it. So I'll have a red orange. And that is, to me, more of the color that you find in a ruby grapefruit. Anyway, it's more of a red-orange. I'm getting some more red for that. It's very bold, like the scent also, which I like. It's hard to see in, on the camera, but this is a red-orange, just mixing those two colors together. And then I'm going to keep the yellow bright. So we'll have that in my color scheme as well. I am going to have the red because the name of this soap, Ruby. So that would be a pretty acceptable soap for the grapefruit soap, I think, including the white. But I wanted some green also because the leaves that cling to the fruit are green. So I'm still holding true to the scent and the inspiration for the soap. But I didn't want that to be so um, stop light signal. So I'm going to add just a touch of black because I want the contrast to be there. So I want a really dark green. And so that's going to be my color scheme. And we'll see how that works out in the soap. 
Okay, I've already blended my soap, but now I'm going to combine it with the colors. There's my white. And then I'm going to be doing a spin swirl. I haven't tried that in a while, and I like to thank my friend Elaine for doing such beautiful work with the spin swirl, so it kind of inspires me. So this is the ruby grapefruit, and so I made um, my orange a bit more red, as I said in the tutorial. And I also know it's going to be lightened when I put it in the uh, the mold. And what I really mean is when it saponifies, the color lightens somewhat, so I'm taking that into account. Yeah, and I mixed this green with some black oxide. So I have this as the more um, dramatic difference in the color that I need. If all the colors are the same value, then you don't get as much dramatic look to the soap. So I always want something kind of on the light side, something on the dark side, and everything in between. So let's combine the fragrance and then start pouring. So the people that are new to adding colorant to their soap, it's um, it's okay to make sure that the color, the soap is actually emulsified, uh, meaning that you don't need to bring it all the way to uh, trace because look at all that additional blending I'm doing. But you do have to make sure that everything is mixed together and that you don't have any oil separation. So if you brought this to trace before you started doing all this, your soap is going to be pretty set up. Too much to do a spin swirl. I also have some gold mica that probably needs a little bit more oil. Okay. So my base color is going to be the grapefruit orange. Hopefully you can see that. So let's start off with that. I'm thinking if you put the colors too far in the corners, they get lost in the swirl. So I'm giving this a shot. And I'm also going to play around with not having the colors like right into each other like in a faux funnel pour. I'm going to offset it a bit. And I think I'll get more of the colors to stay that way. Get some of my white in that lightest area. Or in close to the surface because that's where I want the colors to show. Boy, this grapefruit smells really good too. Let's get that refreshing, citrusy, bright scent that I really like. And lastly, some more yellow. So, 
Well, let's dribble some gold on top of that now. If you see the swirl so far, you'll see that there's some places that aren't as interesting as others. Like I find this really interesting in there. But um, in the spin swirl, there's always a part that gets a little bit muddy. And so I, my plan was to have some of the darker color, like right in here, so that the gold can really show up when contrasted with that. So for example, you see that right in there. So wherever it's dark, I'm going to concentrate the gold and of course some gold drizzle just about everywhere but I want to put it where of course there's more muddy muddiness in that white area too just because there's not much going on right there and hopefully the soap is still liquid enough for me to swirl it again. Let me see if I can do that. And I see this part right here has, I've missed some of that gold, so I'll see if I can get some more out of here. Yeah, all right. I actually added some shredded um, glitter to the gold too to make it a little bit more glittery and I think that really does work. Let me see if I can bring you closer. So I don't know if you can see that the gold has some glitter to it too but anyway. Grapefruit has a real bold scent, so I really wanted the soap to have a bold look to it, too. So there is a close-up of the soap. Okay, let's see what it looks like when I unmold it. There we go. So I never have problems getting the soap out of the actual mold. And what I want to show you on this is the subtlety between the um, orange color that I had and the red for this to represent the ruby grapefruit. And it's really subtle. It's separated by a little thin strip of yellow. And that's um, on what it, I've been talking about with the color tutorial is that you have straight analogous color schemes but you can alter them a little bit to make them a little more unique. There's a little bit of that shimmer with uh, shredded glitter. Kind of reminds me of planet Jupiter too. Not that I've been there, but this color, which is a ruby color uh, with a little orange. I really like that color. I don't know what you would even call it, like a coral. So just about... I think I can say every single bar has all the colors in it and that's what I try to do when I do the swirls. If you spent all the time mixing these subtle colors you sure want to make sure it's represented in every bar. This one's very interesting. Alright so this is um, Clyde at Vibrant Soap. Thanks for watching and I'll be posting underneath in the information area under the video more details about SoapCon um, and how to make reservations to go and attend if you can if you're in that area in Kentucky Mount Sterling and uh, love to meet you in person if I get that chance and um, we'll see you real soon in another video bye everybody